Hello, everybody. It is 3.59 p.m. December 30th, 2017. Almost New Year's. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. It's been a while since we have talked. I've just been shoveling snow for two weeks. You know how it goes. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I haven't been getting too much snow where I live, uh, but areas uh, to the east of the lakes have been getting completely bombarded with snow. I've been watching these uh, these news reports and stuff and people shoveling and it's crazy. You could just see cars. They're just like little humps. You can't even see cars in some of the snow. We're talking five feet, six feet, um, areas of Erie, uh, all sorts of crazy stuff going on with this weather. Um, this video in particular, I want to go into the future a little bit. We like doing that here. Uh, we didn't get our Christmas blizzard like we had anticipated uh, a few weeks before Christmas, but there has been plenty of snow since to make up for it. So I'm sure a lot of you are already sick of it. These temperatures are absolutely insane. In fact, I pulled up a snapshot for you guys just to give you an idea. This is for Monday. This is New Year's Day. Look at some of these wind chill numbers, guys, and especially look at the south in Pensacola, Florida. 20 degrees, okay? This is um, some crazy stuff going on. And once again, this is our jet stream, guys. When our jet stream dips down like this, it's pulling all that winter air down from Canada, and it's just causing these brutal temperatures. I was at work last week, and I want to say three out of the four days, this might sound a little gross, but it's the only way to explain it, but when you breathe in through your nose and you feel like your, your boogers freeze, that's when you know it's cold out. Or when your eyes tear and your tears freeze to your cheek, that's the type of cold it's been. And I'm, I've been in areas of Pennsylvania and uh, Westchester, New York, so it's been just beyond cold. Now, what I want to focus on here is something that we might be dealing with. Uh, once again, a very similar situation to what we were looking at with that possible Christmas blizzard. Now, we are uh, a little bit closer to what these predictions are than we were when we made that uh, Christmas prediction. So this is looking pretty likely. And unfortunately for the areas to the east of the Great Lakes, this might be another big, big situation, um, almost uh, equal to, if not more, than what they've been getting. So... For those of you that live in those areas, this might not sound so great to you, but nonetheless, we need to talk about it. Um, I brought this screen up first only because I want to give you an idea of where our jet stream is pushing air right now. Now, you notice this one, this uh, area of moisture here moving across out into the Atlantic. That's basically what just came and went. That's what dumped um, a significant amount of snow all over Pennsylvania. Northeast Pennsylvania got two to three inches overnight last night. Um, I do have some video... Um, that I didn't have time to prepare. I'm going to do that in the next video. Uh, I will be uploading more regularly now, guys. My job has just been so demanding lately. It's been so hard to keep up with the channel because I do not want to put out videos unless it's something worth watching. Um, I don't like putting out three and four minute videos just to point something out just for views and clicks and stuff like that. That's not what I'm about. I, I like teaching you guys things, and I really apologize for not being active over the last couple of weeks. I've had a lot of people reaching out to me on Twitter and Instagram and email uh, asking how I'm doing. Um, I'm doing great. Everything's fine. You know, just it's the life. I have a uh, full-time job. Um, and I do a lot of traveling in between Pennsylvania and New York, and it's just been very demanding lately. Uh, so, you know, things happen, and I can't just always post every day. I would love to get videos out to you guys every single morning. I would love for this to be my job, but <clears throat> the reality of it is, is I still have to work a lot, and it's just been really time-consuming lately with the snow. Uh, my work days are delayed because, uh... The guy I work with is actually the one who plows our town, so when he's plowing, we can't do our job, so everything gets pushed down and so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. It's just life. Things happen. But um, back to why we're here. So anyway, we had the system move across. It's moving out into the ocean now, so we do have a little bit of break as far as the snow goes, I want to say. Some areas it's snowing right now as we speak around the Great Lakes, Pennsylvania, uh, West Virginia got snow. Uh, Delaware got slammed. All these northeast states have been dealing with just severe cold temperatures and a lot of snow. Um, what I want you to look at right now, though, that we're going to be dealing with more than likely uh, 
based on the amount of time we have, we're talking between January 4th and the 7th, we could be dealing with a very significant system here. And I want you to watch the moisture that's coming out right around here, uh, more towards the west, up into like West Canada and the western U.S. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, western U.S. areas. Now, this is going to move across the Great Lakes. Now, that's not my concern. We have a system, and we're going to talk about this on tropical tidbits because it's the best view we can get of this. Now, we've seen these very dense, significant uh, moisture systems going on before. But the thing with this is that we are so close to this time period that this is a pretty likely outcome. As you can see here, I have this set for January 5th. I'm going to back us up to, let's just start from uh, where we are right now, the 30th. So here's the 30th right now. We had this system that just moved out that dumped a lot of snow, had a lot to do with that uh, lake effect snow that we got. Uh, five feet in Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, some areas got more than that, guys. And then you get the wind blowing snow up against things. It was just unbelievable amounts of snow. But what I want to focus on, and even before we get to that, to the third is when this is going to start. So you can see this moisture here moving across. Now, this is all temperature-based. So if it's not cold enough, most of this is going to be that rain and that slushy type of stuff. Um, but the temperatures that I see at least going on for the next 10 days are well below freezing so chances are this is going to be a lake effect snow deal and this is the third but that's this is not what my worry is right here is what I want to show you as we move forward we see this system moving up out of the Caribbean basically forming right to the east of the Bahamas now this would be a tropical system if we were earlier in the season back in hurricane system or hurricane season rather uh, this is moving up the northeast now I want you to just see what happens here this thing begins to turn in almost like a counterclockwise motion and as far as the CMC goes now you can see it's a little bit out into the Atlantic Ocean which is a good thing the farther out it is the less it's gonna affect the Northeast states but <clears throat> again we speak about how um, even over a couple hours these can shift either west closer to the west which would bring it closer to the East Coast or it would bring it out closer to the ocean, which is what we want, because if that happens, then most of this stuff happens out in the ocean. But with the temperatures that we've been having and the comparison, which I'm going to show you, the CMC and the GMC. Now, the CMC here has this pushed out more to uh, the west into the Atlantic Ocean, but when you switch to the GFS here, the GFS actually, believe it or not, it actually changed in a little bit. Um, it shows the center of this area being right off a couple hundred miles, I want to say, off the coast of Massachusetts. Now, this is what we need to look out for, because if this system in any way, shape, or form ends up over the northeast, we're talking major snow, and we're talking 10, 12 states. And that's why, here, we'll go back to the CMC first. In fact, I had those reversed. The CMC is the one that has a closer to the coast right now as opposed to the GFS. Now that's switched because the CMC earlier in the day had this more out into the ocean um, just like the GFS does now. So that could be a good thing. That might mean that this the uh, potential for the jet stream to push this out into the Atlantic Ocean is a lot better. But if you take a look at these, um, these moisture uh, densities here, any of this stuff that flows over the northeast, that is going to be snow city, especially with the temperatures. We're talking not that packing snow where it's like a little bit wet. We're talking that freezing rain, black ice type stuff. So this is what we're checking out here. So I'm going to back us up to the third here. And now from the fourth on, which is what I put on the uh, thumbnail, is when you really want to pay attention um, if th for those of you that follow Tropical Tidbits, these change hourly. So this system may be a little bit farther to the east in a couple hours. It could be out into the ocean more in a couple hours. But nonetheless, this is pretty significant. So as we move forward to the 4th, that looks to be the date when, if this thing is going to affect these northern states, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, Maine, so on and so forth, and... Um, based on the latitude lines here, this could bring significant snow to areas of uh, North Virginia and certainly West Virginia. Uh, again, based on the temperatures. Now you can take a look at this chart again I brought up and this isn't going anywhere anytime soon guys. These are temperatures we're going to be dealing with for 
um, at least the next week. Now, I saw something interesting on the Weather Channel where the uh, record for temperatures below 30 degrees consecutively in New York at least was 16 days. Now, they're expecting to break that record by four or five days. We're already at 10 or 11, I believe, and I don't see that changing. So we're going to have a record-breaking um, cold streak going on in New York. And from my experience, that only means that records are going to be broken in areas of Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. My throat I'm going nuts today for some reason. Uh, but you just take a look at these temperatures, negative 20, negative 25, and then, like I said before, the, the, focusing on these temperatures down in the south, we're talking the panhandle of Florida, guys, 20 degrees as a wind chill factor. That's pretty crazy, and they don't have any numbers down for these colors, but if you just do the math, you can assume this is like 30 degrees, maybe 40 degree wind chill, and we're talking central Florida, Lake Okeechobee. These are some really crazy cold, cold temperatures that are just, it's almost dangerous to be outside. I was outside for almost nine hours two days ago, and it was one of the worst days of work I had, because I work mostly outside, and it, even though uh, a lot of my job is weather permitting, if you can't be out there, you can't be out there, but it was like the sun was out, and it was seven degrees out, and then the wind chill would bring that easily down to zero, and that's what I'm talking about, where like body fluids, tears, anything like that, anything you touch, water, just freezes instantly, and it's been a long time since I've experienced that, so I wanted to point this out to you guys, so let's finish up here with the CMC. So this is the system we're dealing with, guys. This is a very significant system. And like I said, um, according to the CMC, there are areas of the U.S. that are going to be, especially Maine, that will be affected by this. And because Maine is so close to Canada and that cold air, and what you need to look at as far as the jet stream are these dip rings here. As long as these are dipping down, you can be sure that the, the cold air is being pulled down into the U.S. So... This will do something. I don't know quite yet what exactly it's going to do, but if this system, because it's coming from the tropics, it's not so much going to be a lake effect deal as we see when that moisture comes up um, that begins in Canada and then passes over the lakes and dumps all the snow to uh, the east sides of those lakes. This is more of a tropical system that is going to move north towards the northeast and then meet with cold air so it all depends on those factors so i'm going to be watching that closely i do have a few days off work finally but just look at the expansion of this through uh, january 5th so now we're talking this would be the low of it so picture a, a counterclockwise movement here just like hurricanes do and now we're talking about a possibility of lake effect snow so if some of this moisture is being pulled around this way, depending on how far out it's pulled into Canada and then brought down over the Great Lakes again, this is certainly going to be a snow situation for those areas near Buffalo and Watertown. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. That we've been talking about for the last couple weeks now, just the snow that's been piling up on the east side of these lakes because of the lake effect. Now, let's go to the GFS and see how it expands. Now, we're at the same day here. This is January 6th, so we'll take a step back here, and we'll see what the GFS says. Now, the GFS is somewhat similar as far as its rotation and expansion. Now, that's the big deal here. We're not so much worried about this central area or wherever it passes unless it passes over a specific state because then that state will be hammered uh, by this moisture. So basically, again, what I'm trying to explain here is that this moisture is beginning in basically a tropical area near the Bahamas uh, off the west coast of Florida. So it's coming up from the south, moving up north, and then the issue is going to be those cold temperatures we've been having dipping down from Canada. And once they meet, that's when you start getting the snow. So there could be, I mean, I'm not, I haven't checked uh, much into this area here as far as snow goes, but the temperatures here are just as cold as what we're getting here. So this is definitely a system we need to watch between the 4th and then it looks like by the 7th we're out of the woods with that but then right behind it you can see this strip of moisture here and if you remember a couple weeks ago there was a it, it was these green colors that were bringing a lot of lake effect snow you don't have to have these dense purple colors that just means more moisture now the lake itself the lake effect stuff adds to these colors so 
Um, a lot of times these charts won't incorporate that or else you would see those purples. But even after January 7th, we could be looking at another round of that lake effect snow hitting areas of Buffalo, Watertown, and just those uh, western areas of New York, especially north New York. The farther north we are, obviously the colder it is. All right, but with that said, like I said, my main concern here is how this thing is forming in the Bahamas to the west of Florida. And just, you can see it's making a northern approach. There's no doubt about that. That's going to happen one way or another. But for those of you that follow Tropical Tidbits, I would check it every hour because this is slightly moving to the west, which is closer to the east coast. And then the biggest issue is going to be once this thing gets above, I want to say, the border of where Canada is, if the border were to extend out to the Atlantic Ocean, it's going to widen out, and that counterclockwise movement is going to bring that moisture all the way back around and over the Great Lakes. So areas of Erie, uh, Buffalo, Watertown, those areas that just got slammed and are still shoveling as we speak. Um, I'm sure you guys don't even want to hear any of this anymore, but... That's the main concern right now, and I'll take you back one more time to check out the CMC, which is clearly showing this thing much, much closer to the northeast. So here we are by the Bahamas. The low pressure starts right there, uh, about 200 miles, I want to say, to the west of Lake Okeechobee, which we talked about has 40 degree temperatures right now. Unbelievable. And then right here is where we need to really be concerned, because this is when this begins to widen out, and as we move towards the fifth, look at the size of that. And these dip rings here, it, it's all part of the jet stream. That's all pulling that cold air down from Canada. And the more that they wrap around to the west side of the Great Lakes, that's going to be the issue that brings this moisture back into the areas of New York, Watertown, Buffalo, so on and so forth. Now, before I let you go, I want to show you one more thing as far as the temperature goes on Ventu Sky. So I have a setup for the 30th here. Um, I'm sure by now a lot of you know when you see purple, that means cold. So check this out. Now this is what I want you guys to relate to that system that's beginning down by Lake Okeechobee, moving up and then widening out into this area, so you can get an idea of what the temperatures are going to be once this moisture hits the area. A little bit of a break there, don't get me wrong. These colors are freezing temperatures. Look at that, 6 degrees. And then when you get into these purples, negative 4. The whites, negative 25. I mean... Guys, this is some serious stuff we're dealing with here. A uh, little bit of a break on the second, a little bit of a break on the third, and then the fourth is where my concern is because by the fourth, you can see right here is that counterclockwise spin from that system that's moving up from Lake Okeechobee. Now, depending on where the center of this is, whether, like we saw in the CMC, if it's closer to areas of Long Island, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, areas like that, that's when you're going to have to start worrying about that counterclockwise spin bringing that moisture all the way back around over the Great Lakes. So here would be the fifth. And then by the sixth, guys, look at the temperatures we're dealing with. Negative 20 in North New York. So any moisture in this area, that's immediately crystallized ice. So this isn't going to be your packing snow. This is going to be that big, dusty... Uh, just blowing around and it just it, it adds to the accumulation times 10 in my opinion so this is all due to temperatures it's going to be a tropical system that rides up north the east coast and depending on how close we get to it that's going to determine how much snow we get from it so something to keep an eye on again it's not as far out as that Christmas prediction we had we obviously got most of that snow after Christmas uh, we're talking five days from now. So four or five days, that's within that realm of uh, a pretty good guess as far as these charts go. Um, anyway, guys, I have a second video I'm going to be posting with some time-lapse videos of some snow I filmed today. Uh, besides that, um, here we are. We're back. I'm going to be posting a lot more. Uh, thank you guys for all the concerns on Twitter, Instagram, so on and so forth. Um, I really appreciate it, guys, sticking with me. We're going to get back into it. Like I said, work has just been killing me lately. A lot of traveling um, in between Pennsylvania and New York. So I will be dealing with this weather just as you are. Any questions, concerns, please comment below. Let me know how everyone's doing. And again, I want to start getting pictures and videos from you guys uh, with snow amounts. Um, I want to see this stuff. I'll post it. I'll credit you guys. Um, and that would be wonderful. Um, that's it for now, guys. Until later on today, I'll have another video for you. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.